So once you have the exertional heat stroke victim into the tub, a towel or a sheet successfully underneath their arms and has immersed as much of the body as possible, then you want to add ice. So like we were talking about earlier with the water, it could be that on a normal day you don't have a heat stroke victim. Um, and so therefore you don't always have to have a tub completely already set up with water and ice ready to go. So it could be you just have the tub set up with water and then ice set to the side and coolers. Now if you don't need it for that day then the ice just simply gets dumped. But if you do need it for a heat struck victim then it's ready to go. So once the victim is in or as you're helping the person get equipment off, those are the times that you can easily start adding ice. In this particular time, we didn't have as much clothing to worry about to take off, so we put our victim in and now we're going to be adding ice. So you want to keep adding ice. You can see we have it on top, all right, but we don't have it completely filling the top. So we, our goal is to always make the water as cold as possible. Hopefully you can start with water that's already cool. Um, if not, if you're dealing with warm water, then you just need to keep adding ice. So you can see we now have ice completely covering the top and as cold water immersion continues you want to keep adding ice so that there's always some that is floating on the top. That's going to hopefully ensure without measuring the temperature of the water because that's not worth our efficient time to try to make sure that the water is as cold as possible at all times. So if you have enough hands try to put somebody else in charge of continuing to add ice. Um, but once you have ice floating on the top, your goal is to then start circulating water. Now, it could be that you have a nice paddle handy um, because you are prepared for an exertional heat stroke, or you could simply just use your hand and circulate the water. Otherwise, you just want to always just keep circulating the water. Just like this, almost as if you're just stirring some water. And that way, the cold water continues to circulate around the person. And then as needed, you would continue to add ice to make sure that the water stays cool. On a hot day, it won't be unusual for the water to be warm or for your victim to also be dispersing heat because that's your goal, to be removing heat from the body and out into the water.